a lot of people are asking questions today, at least of me, you know, what is this bear? Are we in a bear market? Are we in a recession? What's going on? What do you think? Where are we going? What should we do? You know, all these, what are, what are, what are, what are, what are, what are questions? So I always come over here and I always look at, and I go from, I go from 1999 through current in to talk about recessions and bear markets, because the last true recession and bear market that we had that was extended, at least from a stock market analysis perspective, over a multi-year period of time was 2000, 2001, 2002. And you'll see here, we had loss, loss, loss. 2008 was horrible. There was a lot of crazy stuff going on. Um, and I think economically, we had a runoff in 9, 10, and 11. But from a stock market perspective, it all happened in 2008. And then, boom, everything switched. It was actually March of 2009. We hit the bottom and everything started going the other way. But you you have to kind of digress the two parts into their own unit to say, well, the stock market's one thing and the economy is another. But when you look at the positive numbers on the board versus the negative numbers on the board, this section right here is really the last time we had a multi-year issue. So it's likely at some point in the future, we're going to have a multi-year issue. Do I want to have a multi-year issue? Absolutely not. I'm not trying to predict that. I'm not trying to say that's what's going to happen. I'm not trying to say that's what I want to happen. I just like to use history as a predictor of the future. Does it always happen? No. But I do think there is going to be at least a two-year loss of market, loss in economy, recession, whatever you want to call it, at some point in the next decade. I just think it has to happen. Or if it doesn't happen, we're going to take 2008 and we're going to we're going to blow it out of the water and have like a 50 or 60% loss if it's going to be fast. Now again, I'm not predicting that. I have no ability to predict that. I have no idea what's going to happen. But if you don't talk through the negative what ifs with your client, I don't think you're going to get to the heart and core of their emotion of what will help them make good decisions. If this was negative 60 and not negative 30, how would that make you feel? And just wait. Because is it possible? Absolutely, it's possible. Will it happen? I have no idea. If it doesn't happen, great. But if it does happen, we have to be ready to make good decisions and make sure we have balance in our account. So I use this market history a lot to kind of bring back history and remind people what happened. And if they're old enough um, to be living and investing and doing something with their money during these times, I try to make them remember what was going on. What was, tell me about what you were doing in 2000, 2001, 2002. How much money did you have in the market? What did it make you feel when you saw this go down by these percentages? Same thing from 2008. What was going on? Did you lose your job? But what were the dynamics for you if I didn't know you then? And tell me how it made you feel. And if they didn't have money or didn't have a job or weren't working yet, maybe they're a younger client, simulate it. Well, what would you what would you feel? How would you feel if this happened to you? And again, I've had probably five conversations this year so far with clients who in 2018, 2019, 2020, even after the COVID bubble of 2020 and 2021, who said, yes, I can handle risk. I am okay with taking a stock-based approach to my yellow tank. If the accounts go down, I can handle it. And I really try to put them to the to toe the line on that. Because when it happens, I have to go, remember the conversation that we had. We talked about this. This is what could have happened. It's now happening. So we can't bail from that strategy. Alternatively, We've now got some money in this safe tank. Now, alternatively, the best time to buy would be now after we've had the market going down. And I always refrain from saying there's no perfect time to buy. It's just we always want to buy when the market's down. We never know how far down the market will go. So it's possible you could buy now and the market will keep going down. But if you're long-term in that account, 
it will behoove you to buy at some level of a discounted value. And that's why we need balance in the system. And very few people achieve the balance to allow them to buy when the market's down. And if you can discipline yourself to do that, it's going to treat your yellow tank assets very, very strongly because you're doing what very few people are doing, which is buying low, not selling low, which is what a lot of people want to do when the market's down. Again, I don't hope thing, bad things to happen. Never. No, not ever. But ironically, I went away from the screen and came back and the Dow Jones Industrials up here. And you think back to the Great Depression. Look at these numbers. Just simply showing your client that data in an annual review meeting and saying, what if this happened? What would you do? Where are you in the process? How close are you to retirement? How protected is your money? And again, I'm not, I, I am a full believer in balance. We want to have risk assets. We want to have safe assets. But what I see on a more regular basis than I can count is that everybody looks like this. And if you can get the message across with clients that you have in the annual review, how important balance is, if this goes like this and we were in balance, we're going to find a way to be okay, hopefully. Can't guarantee that, but if I've got money over here that's not going backwards with all those stock market, real estate, business, whatever, all those things can be in here and all those things can lose value. We have to have things that can't go backwards. And you could entirely lose things in your risk tank if it got that bad, but you could have money in your safe tank to buy a new asset that could get you back to where you were. And it's those conversations that I think very few people are having. And that if you can set yourself apart and help educate your client as they stay your client year over year, or however often you're doing a review with that client, I think it's definitely going to set yourself apart.